Do you want an average, run-of-the-mill Disney World vacation like everybody else? Or do you want an amazing, unique Disney World vacation that everyone's going to be jealous of? If you're looking for the latter, then keep watching, because we've got just the tricks you need to know for the best trip ever here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. You want Disney World advice? We've got the Disney World advice, but we're not talking about the regular old Disney tips and tricks that you might have heard a thousand times over. Today, we're talking about all the things you're gonna need to know before you go into the parks that have gone undiscussed for long enough either because these tips are brand new to the Disney scene or they've somehow slipped under the radar over time. As you start to brainstorm your future Disney World you're more than welcome to use our free planning worksheets to help you keep track of what you'll need to accomplish before you go. You can download these worksheets by scanning the QR code you see on the screen now, or you can pick them up from DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans. All right, ready to dive into all the good stuff? Here we go. Number one, parking trams have returned. Now, this sounds boring. It is not, my friends. If you have been to Disney World, if you have tried to get into the parks from those parking lots or get back to your car from the parks after a very, very long day in Disney World, you will understand how important these parking trams are. Now, after Disney World reopened in 2020, post those closures for COVID, the trams in the parking lots disappeared. Why? Who knows? Probably staff shortages. However, Disney did eventually bring trams back to the Transportation and Tickets Center, which is the area you park in when you visit Magic Kingdom, as well as Animal Kingdom. And yet, the trams remained MIA in Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Until now. Currently, all Disney World parks now have their tram systems up and running again, meaning if you're forced to park all the way in the back of one of the parking lot areas, a tram will be able to take you to and from the spot without you having to worry about all that extra walking, especially toward the end of the day when you find yourself crawling out the front gates of the park as is. Next up, let's talk mobile order from Disney Springs. So mobile ordering inside the Disney parks has been a thing to do at quick services for a while now, sparing you from having to wait in any super long physical queues and instead giving you the option to order what you want through the My Disney Experience app, then returning to pick up your order when it's ready for you. So mobile ordering around Disney Springs though, isn't as big of a deal as it is inside the parks. But there are five Disney Springs quick services that do have those mobile order capabilities featured on the My Disney Experience app, including Amaritz Patisserie, BB Wolf Sausage Company, Disney's Candy Cauldron, Deluxe Burger, and Goofy's Candy Company. Even though most other quick service locations around the shopping district aren't featured as a mobile order option on the My Disney Experience app, they may still have a mobile order function available through their own website or app like you can find with restaurants like Chicken Guy and Everglazed and Polite Pig and those ones. So it's always worth checking to see if a Disney Springs fast food joint has mobile order capabilities, whether it be through Disney's own app or not, because it can really save you time. Okay, let's talk about Disney's latest attraction, that Moana Journey of Water or Journey of Water inspired by Moana. I don't know, we're probably never gonna get the name right. Wearing good, reliable, water-friendly shoes is going to be important at this particular attraction. Now, of course, you're already wearing good, reliable, water-friendly shoes, right? Because you know it's probably gonna rain when you're in Disney World, but I just wanna kind of reiterate this one for the Moana attraction. Now, this one is gonna be opening on October 16th, and we were able to check out the attraction early through a cast member preview, actually, because we have a cast member friend that took us along with them. And since this walkthrough is all about the cycle of water, the interactive elements here are gonna get you a little soggy. So each of the sections of the walkthrough, including rain, stream, wetland, spring, land, lake, river, ocean, and sky, have a way for you to directly play with water. While you can still walk out of this experience completely dry if you want to by choosing the dry alternative paths instead of the wet ones, in order to fully interact with this one, you're gonna wanna pick an outfit that is drip dry ready. Brace yourself for big ocean splashes and gushing geysers and a waterfall curtain that can split in two depending on how slowly you walk through it. It is very cool. Also go watch our video about it cause it's really fun. 
Now let's talk dining promo cards and the Disney dining plan. If you're looking for a way to get free money to use toward your future Disney dining and eating, then you're gonna wanna track down those exclusive dining promotion cards. Dining promo cards are essentially gift cards that you'll receive when you stay at a Disney-owned hotel during one of their dining promotional seasons. You can use these cards for food throughout Disney World, but you won't be able to spend them on anything else. So no big gift store shopping sprees or anything, you're just spending these on food. This year, we saw the limited time promotion announced in January applicable for trips taking place in July through September. But a new dining promotion was just dropped at the beginning of September, which will give these dining gift cards to hotel guests booking trips during certain time frames between late 2023 and early 2024, so hello Christmas season. Now, depending on the hotel you're staying in, you can receive up to $60 to $200 per room per night. Not per person, just keep that in mind, per room. But of course, there are a lot of details and fine print that you'll need to read up on before figuring out if this deal is right for you or if you should book the Disney dining plan, which is a completely separate thing. We've got a whole video on it for you and we have a whole book about it as well. So comparing the dining promo card to the Disney dining plan is something you should take on. Now you can do that yourself or you can reach out to our travel agent friends over at Small World Vacations. They'll help you do that discount research for you. I'll link their info down in the description below in case you wanna ask them for a free quote. Okay, this next one is just a general throwing this out there sort of tip that you're gonna need to take to heart to keep from beating yourself up if things suddenly go askew while you're in the parks. You can do everything right, literally everything. You can make the advanced dining reservations. You can learn all about Disney Genie Plus. You can figure out how to use the My Disney Experience app and your Disney vacation will still figure out a way to throw you a curveball. Ride breakdowns happen, technology fails us, that restaurant you were looking forward to wasn't nearly as awesome as everyone told you it would be. Cast members will do their best to help fix problems you run into inside the Disney bubble, but some of those solutions can take time. So brace yourself for those hiccups that might pop up during your trip, threatening to ruin you emotionally and logistically, but continue to anticipate the best. I'm telling you right now, we've been through some horrible things in Disney World. We've been through some messed up mistakes. We have a terrible things that have happened to people in Disney World and most of them have happened to us. That's a video we've got for you. If you wanna go check that out, cause we're gonna give you a bunch of solutions to some of these problems, but Disney World is the boss and we're just in their world. So do not get too frustrated or upset if things don't go exactly as you planned, cause they're probably not going to leave a little flexibility and leave a little open-mindedness for yourself so you know that none of this is your fault. All right, we got some Starbucks updates for you. Now, don't worry, Starbucks isn't going anywhere, but it might throw a kink in your park day if you're not careful. Each Disney World park is home to a Starbucks location where you can order all your favorite drinks from home as well as some classic bakery and pastry items. They're all located pretty centrally in the parks, usually not too far from the entrance. So in the mornings, as you might expect, you're gonna find these Starbucks spots getting pretty packed with early risers looking for their caffeine fix before the official start of the day. But after the morning rush, that's when we start to run into a rather bizarre problem. You see, each Starbucks is designed with two separate queue lines, so you can either wait in line to order on the left side of the counter or the right side of the counter. There isn't a difference in the offerings or the experience really, but it's just a way to get a higher volume of guests through the restaurant in a single go. But there have been a few times lately that we've come into one of these Starbucks locations around the afternoon only to find the line getting really long since the shop is effectively operating at half capacity. So just as a warning for you, if you wanna grab your Starbies in the afternoon, you may actually end up waiting longer than anticipated because they do shut down half of the line. It doesn't happen in every Starbucks location every day, but it is a fairly common occurrence. If you run into this problem, you can always choose to visit a Joffrey's kiosk instead for your cup of afternoon Java since they usually have shorter lines. And several quick services also have limited coffee offerings too that you might be able to hit up instead for even shorter lines. To find out which locations in the park offer coffee, go to your My Disney Experience app and type coffee in the search engine. All the restaurants that have coffee on their menus are gonna pop up to help you narrow down your caffeine hunt. So I am a sucker for a good discount, and those discounts are even more exciting when Disney decides to add them to their gift shops. Sometimes Disney gift shop discounts appear when Disney needs to clear out their end of season festival and holiday merchandise to make room for all the new stuff. 
But on other occasions, we find discounts that just encourage you to buy a few more items than you were planning on getting in the first place, like promotions for Nuimo outfits, making it cheaper for you to get three of them instead of two, or how if you spend a certain amount of money in the shop, you'll be able to get a certain promotional bag or a blanket or something for a highly discounted price. So keep your eyes peeled for these unique savings opportunities, just in case they apply to you. And don't forget to check on the Shop Disney website for any bigger discount opportunities on theme park merchandise that you might be missing out on by purchasing your souvenirs inside the physical shops. Sorry, that was a lot of tips in one, but discounts in the gift shops, check Shop Disney to make sure you can't get a bigger discount there. Those are the most important parts. Now, turn on those push notifications. For the release of this video, getting a boarding group number for the virtual queues of Tron Light Cycle Run in Magic Kingdom and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot is still the only way you're going to be able to experience either one of these high-speed coasters unless you pay extra for an individual lightning lane. We have entire posts on our DFB website going over how you can secure these virtual queues during your next trip with like step-by-step -step screenshots and everything. But for now, I'm just going to talk to you about one very important boarding group reminder that'll make your day in the park that much easier. Once you have a boarding group, make sure your push notifications for your phone are turned on for the My Disney Experience app. That way, you don't have to keep checking back on the app to see when your number is called. Instead, you'll be notified when it is, offering a little extra insurance that you're not going to miss that ride. After your boarding group number is called, you'll have an hour window to scan into the line so you don't have to stress about rushing over to the ride right when you get that notification. Just wrap up whatever you're doing and scan into the line before the end of the hour. Next, we've got some Space 220 advice for you. So Space 220 is the most popular table service restaurant in Epcot, meaning advanced dining reservations for both its main dining room and its lounge book up really, really fast, and it's hard to find them if you've missed them. But what if I told you there was still a way to experience the Centauri Space Station with no reservation necessary? Well, each day, Space 220 offers up some first-come, first-served bar seating. More often than not, you'll have to put your name on a walk-up wait list in order to be eligible for this, which you can do over at the Space 220 host stand. Bar seating is only available for those 21 and older, so if you're traveling with younger group members, you're still going to want to set your alarm 60 days before your vacation to snag those popular advanced dining reservations, which will go live on the site around 5.30 to 6 a.m. Eastern. But if you're just traveling with you and your spouse or a group of all adults, this could be a good alternative for you if you miss that reservation window. Now, Disney gift cards aren't just something you can get in a birthday card or as a wedding present. They can really become the most convenient way to pay for things around the parks. If you make yourself an account on the Disney gift card website, you'll be able to virtually keep track of all your gift cards, even the physical ones that you get as a present or the discounted ones you can get inside those big box stores like Target or Sam's Club. On the Disney gift card website, you'll be able to purchase new cards, reload more money onto pre-existing cards, check your card balance, and several other things that'll make using these cards inside the parks even easier than using cash or a credit card. So as you know, we always recommend that you go ahead and buy some discounted Disney gift cards before you leave, which you can do with your Target Red card or at Sam's Club, etc. But loading them all up here means that you're not going to be completely in the dark about how much you have left on your cards. Now, I love this tip. This is one of my favorite ones that a lot of people don't know about. So you can make merchandise returns with no strings attached at like any store. So buyer's regret does not have to be a thing in Disney World for you. If you buy something from one of the Disney World gift shops and then decide later on you'd rather return it and get something else, you can do that. You've just got to make that return within 30 days of the product's original purchase and make sure that it's never been worn or used with all its packaging and tags. If you bring a copy of the item's receipt when making the return, then you'll be able to get a full refund on the card you use to purchase said item. That includes Disney gift cards as well. However, if you can't find the item's receipt, you may still be able to get a refund for it, but only in the form of Disney Parks merchandise credit. Now, remember, you don't have to return the item to the store where you bought it. You can return the item to any Disney-owned and run store on property. That's right. So maybe you bought something at the Emporium in Magic Kingdom and you want to return it, but you don't have any more park tickets. Well, you can just go to the gift shop in your Disney hotel. So maybe you're at Wilderness Lodge. You can go to the Wilderness Lodge gift shop and return that item right there. You don't have to go back to Magic Kingdom to Emporium. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. Okay, this next one might be the most important Disney World lesson you learn in your life. 
Disney has very sexy French fries. And by sexy, I mean they ain't your average fast food fried potatoes. These are loaded with savory toppings, salty seasonings, some of the best dipping sauces around. Here are a few of our personal sexy fry favorites. The loaded burnt end fries at Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot are made with seasoned French fries, burnt ends, macaroni and cheese, and beer battered onion rings. Mr. Kamal's seasoned fries in Animal Kingdom come with a sriracha mayo, giving the fries this nice creamy tangy flavor packed with a little bit of heat. And yes, we're sad that there aren't the rest of the dipping sauces there still, but at least we still have one, y'all. Let's, let's be happy. Now, the truffle fries at Enchanted Rose in Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, that's kicking it up a little fancy notch for you. These are topped with shaved black truffles and 18-month aged Parmesan. And last but not least, for now, Steakhouse 71's fries inside Disney's Contemporary Resort are garlic Parmesan dusted waffle fries that come with a side of chimichurri and truffle aioli. Now, we've got a lot more fry options for you. Believe me, I'm sure we've got them sprinkled throughout the rest of our videos. I've talked about lots of fries lots of times. We also have a good sexy fries blog post for you, so definitely go check that out. Now, Disney World has to routinely close parts of their hotels for maintenance and remodeling. We know this, and that goes for their pools as well, because they want to keep those in tip-top shape. If you love hanging out at Disney World pools, and that's going to be a real big part of your trip coming up, then you're going to want to make sure you check the main webpage of the hotel you're staying in to see if any temporary pool closures have been announced. So far, the main pool closures we're seeing for Disney World in 2024 that'll last from January through April will be over at the Fantasia Pool at All Star Movies Resort, the Cozy Cone Pool at Art of Animation, the Fuentes del Moro Pool at Caribbean Beach Resort, and the Dubloon Lagoon Pool at Port Orleans Resort, French Quarter. Oh, also, Stormalong Bay over at Yacht and Beach Club will be receiving massive updates too, but not until 2025. When it does close, though, it'll be gone for five whole months between January and May. And I'm starting to warn you about this now because I definitely don't want you to book this really expensive hotel and not be able to use their water park like pool. So please excuse me while I pre mourn its absence because it's literally the best pool in all of Disney World and I will not be taking questions at this time. Fortunately, even if you do wind up at one of these hotels when a pool closure is scheduled, each resort still has multiple pool options for you to choose from as an alternative, except for Dubloon Lagoon. If you're at that one, you're going to have to go over to Riverside to use their pool. And if experiencing a certain style of pool or a certain feature pool was a key reason you were planning on booking a stay at said resort in the first place, then you may have to adjust your vacation schedule for one of the warmer seasons after maintenance wraps up. Or you can always choose another resort to stay at where all the pools will still be ready and available for you to cannonball on into. Okay, this next one is one of those harsh realities of going to Hollywood Studios that's better to accept now rather than when you're in the thick of your visit. And because, you know, not all of these tips have to be happy tips. Some of them are going to be difficult tips for us to come to grips with just so that we know so that our trips aren't the worst, right? So while Hollywood Studios has a lot of great quick service locations like Woody's Lunchbox and Ronto Roasters and Backlot Express, great quality table service meals are kind of in short supply here. Sure, you've got those options like Roundup Rodeo Barbecue and Hollywood Brown Derby, but even those have their faults to an extent. Roundup Rodeo is going to be your most expensive barbecue option property wide with much cheaper barbecue quick service options, including places like Flame Tree Barbecue and Animal Kingdom, that yummy Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot, and Polite Pig in Disney Springs. Meanwhile, even though our love for Hollywood Brown Derby is immense, this is the park's signature restaurant, meaning those prices are going to be steep. Often we find ourselves preferring to grab a table over at the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge instead for some apps and cocktails, rather than having to fight for advanced dining reservations for Hollywood Brown Derby sit-down table service in there, which can fill up pretty quickly depending on the season you're visiting. Now, there are really cool themed table service restaurants in Hollywood Studios like Sci-Fi Dine-In, 50s Primetime Cafe, and Hollywood and Vine. But the problem with these babies is that their food quality is hit or miss, like all the time. So while the overall atmosphere is great, the food itself might wind up being kind of disappointing for the price you paid. Not always, but enough of the time that I want to warn you about it. That's why it's always a good idea to study up on the most recent reviews of these kinds of restaurants, just so you know what exactly you're making reservations for. If you're headed to Hollywood Studios, or any of the parks for that matter, and you're overwhelmed with dining options, wondering whether or not any of these restaurants are actually going to be worth booking a reservation for, been there, done that, 
then I got good news for you because we've tried every single restaurant across the parks and across the resorts multiple times. We go there all the time. We could fill you in on insider reviews for every place you can find food and drinks in Disney World. So pick up our three-part DFB guide to Walt Disney World dining if you are so inclined. You can head to dfbstore.com, type in code YouTube to save money on your purchase if you buy it. And if you do, I thank you in advance for supporting our work here on the channel. But if you're not into purchasing that yet, if you're new to us, not sure if you trust us yet, that's cool. Go ahead over to disneyfoodblog.com. We got lots of reviews. We got lots of recent reviews. We do food reviews at least a couple times a week. um, And we make sure we hit all of those restaurants at least once every few months. So go check those out and see how you feel. Okay, please bring your hand sanitizer. Disney World is a Petri dish. There are a lot of germs there, just like any other public place, and you're gonna be exposed to them a lot. Whether it be pulling down on a ride's lap restraint or sitting at a quick service table or even picking up a plushie at a Disney gift shop, germs lurk around every corner. I'm not trying to be, you know, dramatic about it. I'm just saying, it really stinks to take a Disney World vacation and get sick in the middle of it or be sick the whole week you're home after the vacation. So. You're always going to want to be prepared with portable hand sanitizer and those maybe those disinfecting wipes too in your park bag. This is especially important if you're planning on tasting around one of the Epcot festivals and you don't want to track down a bathroom to wash your hands all the time. Disney Resort gift shops also sell germ fighting agents if you find yourself needing some ASAP, but it's better to purchase these ahead of your trip to avoid having to pay those more expensive Disney prices for them. By the way, I will say even if you don't care about germs, those wipes can be super, super helpful if you're trying to find a table to eat at during a very, very busy time of day and someone just got up and left and nobody's been able to come over and wipe it down yet and it's really gross. You know what I'm talking about. Those can be helpful during those times too. Okay, this is kind of an overall blanket tip about menus. I know I talk about all the changes that happen in Disney World literally all the time, but nothing changes here more than the food does. The reason Disney changes up its menus so frequently kind of varies. You might find new snacks and desserts specific for holidays. Ingredients might be replaced with other ingredients in certain entrees based on kind of what's less expensive or what's more available. Less popular items could be taken off the menu and replaced with new ones. Prices might tick upward, a less fun menu change, but it happens a lot. The moral of the story here, never trust that a Disney menu is gonna stay the same forever and always. Things change, chefs move around. There are food shortages sometimes. We had like no turkey in Disney World for like months last year because of that. You never really know what's gonna happen. Now our team is constantly keeping track of any and all Disney menu changes. We write a blog article every week with every single menu change we spot on the Disney World menus for you. And believe me, I know if you're really excited about having something specific at a Disney restaurant it's not there when you arrive, that can make or break your trip, right? So check out our DFB website, the newsletter, social media pages. Be sure to follow along so you'll always know what menu changes are happening or are about to happen as well. Speaking of menu changes, did you know that you can get chicken stuffed Mickey waffles on a stick? Yes, you can, my friends. Consider this mic officially dropped. It has happened. Over at Rick's Sports Bar and Grill in Disney's Coronado Springs Resort, which you've probably never even heard of because nobody ever goes there, you can find chicken stuffed waffles on the breakfast menu. Now, these come with four Mickey waffles stuffed with chicken tenders and maple syrup and served with herb butter house potatoes on the side. And while the waffles here aren't massive, they're the Mickey mini waffles, the mini Mickey waffles. <laughs> they're still really filling and fun to share. So it may be a great breakfast option before you head into the parks for the day, especially if you're a big chicken and waffles fan. For even better quality chicken and waffles though, I'd recommend hitting up the Grand Floridian Cafe or switching out those waffles for the fried chicken and donuts at Homecoming over in Disney Springs. Both of those are awesome, but they are not chicken stuffed Mickey waffles, so just heads up. But if you're already staying as a guest at Coronado Springs or you really can't picture eating your chicken and waffles any other way than in a Mickey form on a stick, Rick's will give you a fun breakfast alternative that your family's gonna love. Okay, with each new Epcot festival, a new concert series arises, bringing with it celebrity guests and big name performers and local talent of all sorts. So these concerts are totally free with the cost of park admission, and most of the seating is first come first served. That being said, for the more popular concerts like the Candlelight Processional that happens during Festival of the Holidays, those theater seats fill up quickly and could leave you seatless very easily. Which is why some folks like to go the dining package route instead. Dining package 
packages allow you to prepay for a meal at one of the eligible Epcot restaurants, and after you eat, you'll be given a seating badge that gets you access to a special queue for reserved seating at the show. It's basically guaranteeing your seat. While it's a good idea to book these dining packages ahead of your trip, same-day dining packages might also be available for the day of your visit for Regal Eagle Smokehouse and or Spice Road Table, depending on the festival. The same-day dining package can't be booked through the My Disney Experience app or website, meaning you'll have to physically walk up to the restaurant and book this package in person. If you're going to take the gamble and try your luck at getting a same-day dining package, try heading to the restaurant that's offering it as soon as it opens. We've seen same-day dining packages sell out real early on in the afternoon, and cast members have told us in the past that the amount of packages they have to sell can vary by the day, so sometimes they can be quite limited. There also might be certain restrictions that apply to these same-day dining packages, so be sure to read over the rules of the offerings before you bank on them for your next trip. Oh, and get this, you might not even have to pay for a dining package for some of these VIP privileges depending on what festival you're at. Depending on the time of day and availability, you may be able to get a wristband for seating at the Eat to the Beat concert series, which happens during the Food and Wine Festival, just by visiting the Florida Blue Lounge over in Morocco. Now, the Florida Blue Medicare Lounge is a pop-up rest spot during the Food and Wine Festival. It takes place inside the former restaurant Marrakesh. According to one of the Epcot cast members, guests with a special wristband from this lounge can head to the brick building by the America Gardens Theater about 15 minutes before the concert to be led to their VIP seats subject to availability. Be sure to check with a cast member inside the lounge for more details. Now we were told they have about 25 wristbands for each show of the evening, so you need to get there early and grab yours. Now for warning, you will need to register for the lounge through the My Disney Experience app. You can just search Florida Blue to get to the registration part or by visiting the Florida Blue website. It's free, but you must be 18 or older, and if you do decide to register, you are consenting for Florida Blue to use your email and phone number for marketing to you. It's nothing malicious, but you'll still wanna talk it over with your group just to make sure everyone's cool with that. Now, as much as we tend to express our qualms regarding the Disney buses, I really am grateful they exist so we don't have to constantly pay for ride shares or drive ourselves place to place if we don't want to. That being said, Bus transportation can take forever. For example, let's say you're staying at All Star Sports and you have an advanced dining reservation at Via Napoli and Epcot and you need to get there stat. After walking to the bus stop, waiting for the bus to arrive, riding over to the park, scanning in, and walking over to the Italy Pavilion, the entire trip could take you well over an hour. And if you're staying at a hotel with an internal bus loop that picks up guests at several different stops before finally heading over to the park, it might take you even longer than that. So just be sure to factor in plenty of extra travel time into your daily itineraries, and don't forget to budget back for Uber or Lyft rides just in case you're on a tight schedule or minivans. You can always do that minivan jam too. But let me tell you from experience, just add on an extra half hour to however long you think it'll take you to get there because you're probably going to need it, at least to avoid the stress. All right, now here's how to request the best seats at Epcot's newest restaurant. There's a lot to love about the new Shiki Sai Sushi Izakaya restaurant in Epcot's Japan Pavilion. From the seasonal decor to the rotating menu to fresh flavors and a $300 sushi boat. But there's another new element you can enjoy here too, and that's the specialty fireworks windows. These aren't your average everyday windows that just so happen to look out at the fireworks going on each evening, though you can do that from Shiki Sai as well. These are digital windows that use screen technology to create a nighttime spectacular over a Japanese garden that you can experience no matter what time of day you're visiting. If you're planning on dining at Shiki Sai during your next visit and want to see the exclusive fireworks going on there, be sure to request a table at one of these windows. Granted, you aren't 100% guaranteed a fireworks window when you ask for one because they could already be filled up during your reservation time, but even if you're not seated at a window with this particular fireworks view, it's still worth walking past a table that does have one just for a quick peek. Okay, so wildly enough, the best Disney Park merchandise may not be inside Disney World. Okay, stay with me here. While you're in the Orlando area, be sure to check out the Disney character warehouses outside the parks. Disney Parks operates these character warehouses as liquidation stores for Disney Parks and Resorts merchandise, which is why you can find legit Disney Parks merch at outlet prices here. There are two Disney character warehouses in Orlando. The first is at the Orlando International Premium Outlets, and the second is located at the Orlando Vineland Premium Outlets. If you don't have time to visit either warehouse during your next trip, no worries, you can also typically find discounted park merchandise 
maybe not as discounted, but still discounted over there on the Shop Disney website too. So there are a number of rules you're gonna wanna know before you visit Disney World, but one in particular is especially important to keep in mind in order to keep the peace. Cast members are generally trained to limit guests to no more than two alcoholic beverages per transaction at quick service locations, which yes, also includes the Epcot Festival booths. So if there's a certain location at Disney that has multiple drinks you're wanting to try, narrow down your options to just one or two priority purchases instead of aiming to push those limits. Sure, you could always swing by a restaurant again a few hours later to make a new drink transaction, but limiting your drink options to just a couple must-tries can also help save your budget since those alcohol prices add up so fast. And as always, please drink responsibly when you are in Disney World. In 2021, the Main Street Confectionery got a nice shiny upgrade, which included a little spot in the back of the shop called the Colonel Kitchen, where you can customize your very own popcorn mix. Now, a lot of people don't know about this. Nobody talks about it very much. But at the Colonel Kitchen, you'll pick a popcorn flavor, either caramel, rainbow, butter, or cheddar, and sometimes they change those up. You'll pick a syrup, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or white chocolate, and then top it all off literally with a selection of multiple candy possibilities like M&Ms and pretzels and marshmallows, you know, the works. The Colonel Kitchen is a really fun concept that allows you to put a unique spin on a classic treat, but be warned it can be a bit of a steep asking price for just a bag of popcorn, customized or not. Popcorn prices start at around $13, but cost an extra dollar for each additional topping. Animal Kingdom Lodge is one of our favorite deluxe resorts to stay in, but many of the offerings it has available for guests don't even require you to book a room at the hotel to take advantage of them. Take its secret lobby balconies, for instance. To find these balconies, just exit the main building and climb up the spiral staircases. And then you'll be led to these quiet areas with rocking chairs and a perfect view out across the resort's full savanna. To find these, just head toward the lobby bathrooms to find the doors leading out to the balconies. Speaking of the resort savanna, if you want a more in-depth look at all the animals here, you might want to consider taking a Starlight Safari for $89 per person. This is an hour-long experience that takes place well after the sun goes down, but don't worry, you're not driving through pitch blackness the entire time. You're going to receive a pair of night vision goggles before your journey to help you spot the African wildlife during your ride. Guests must be at least eight years old to participate, and believe me when I say your older kids are going to love this. I mean, a nighttime safari with real animals and their very own night vision goggles? Yeah, they're going to love that, making you the hero of the trip. Booking is available via the My Disney Experience app. Just search Starlight Safari or by calling 407-WDW-TOUR. Okay, are you ready to reach out and find your happily ever after? Then bring a box of tissues and find a spot to stand at one of these areas inside Magic Kingdom, which are the best places to watch happily ever after. First up is behind Cinderella Castle. Now this is only a recommendation for those who only care about seeing the fireworks and hearing the music, but don't care if they have to miss the projection show in order to skip the high volume crowds. The areas in Fantasyland or Tomorrowland that aren't closed to guests during the duration of the show, like near Gaston's Tavern, provide a unique perspective that's usually pretty chill and doesn't have you shoulder checking people the whole time. Next is near Casey's Corner. If you wanna for sure see all the projections Happily Ever After has to offer, then try staking out a spot at the top of Main Street USA in the area of Casey's Corner in the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. That should give you a good view of the projections on the castle and the projections behind you down the Main Street Strip. If you want a spot around this area, you're gonna have to seek it out at least 30 to 45 minutes before showtime for most of the shows. And you can go by Main Street train station or even up onto the train station. If you keep moving your way down Main Street USA toward the entrance of the park, you'll be able to watch Happily Ever After near that station, which will allow you to fully take in the full breadth of the massive fireworks over the castle without needing to cram your neck skyward. The only downside is that the castle projections will be a bit far away. You'll still be able to appreciate all the pretty colors and lights, and you can make a quick getaway after the show concludes before everyone starts charging toward the exit. Okay, anybody can go to the hotels. Remember what I said earlier about how anyone can experience most offerings at Animal Kingdom Lodge, regardless of whether they're staying there as a guest or not? The same goes for their restaurants too. In fact, the same goes for all Disney World hotel restaurants. 
Whether you're staying at one resort or another, or even one that's completely off Disney World property, you're still totally allowed to make dining reservations for any of the Disney Resort restaurants that you want to try. So, you want to get all fancy with a meal over at Citrico's and Grand Floridian, or you want to bring on the tropical vibes with all-you-can-eat delicacies from Ohana and Disney's Polynesian Village? It doesn't matter whether you're staying at either resort or at the Holiday Inn across the way. Just as long as there's reservations still available, everyone has the option of grabbing a table for even Disney Resort's nicest signature dining locations. Now, we love it when Disney World launches a change that makes our lives easier instead of more complicated, which is why we very much appreciate this super recent My Disney Experience dining update. So making Disney dining reservations through the My Disney Experience app used to be a game of luck. While you were able to search around for advanced dining reservations via the website or app, there was never a way to see the full list of available reservation times for any given restaurant. Instead, you had to tinker around with the system in hopes that the different time would magically appear. That worked well with your Disney itinerary. But now things are way easier. If you're looking for a specific dining reservation, you'll be able to see all of the available dining options for the restaurant you're interested in. All right there, right in front of you. How easy is that? For example, if you're looking for a Saturday lunch reservation for 50's Primetime Cafe in Disney's Hollywood Studios, a family favorite among many, you'll be able to see all the reservation times still available for that day without all the extra search and find legwork. It's kind of like Open Table now if you've used the Open Table website. And it has been so much easier to find reservations for those hard to get restaurants. Okay, so I can't be the only person who hates the paper straws, right? Right. Now, while I am grateful that Disney's taking steps to being more environmentally conscious, the feel of paper straws getting all gummy and then eventually dissolving before you finish your drink is just gross. No, thank you. So select Disney World restaurants have sugar cane or bamboo straw alternatives, which I highly prefer. But since more straws are of the paper variety, especially around Disney's quick service locations, you may want to invest in some reusable straws before your trip. Now, some reusable straws come with carrying cases and cleaning brushes, and they are even better to track down at your local big box store or off the Amazon website. And that way you can keep them nice and clean all trip long. But I personally love my fade straws, which are marine biodegradable, so you can keep the turtles safe and they feel a lot more like regular straws. I buy those on Amazon too. So bringing a change of clothes for your younger kiddos or infants might have already crossed your mind. You know you're supposed to do that, right? In case of ice cream spills or blowouts or super soaked outfits after running through the splash pads. But you might wanna do the same. One too many times I found myself in the parks wishing for a wardrobe change when a sudden rainstorm hit and soaked me to the bone, or I'm caught with shorts and a tank top during a rare Floridian cold spike, or because of an ice cream spill, since newsflash parents' accidents happen to grown-ups too. So packing spare lightweight clothing in your park bag or stroller for emergency purposes can save you from having to backtrack all the way to your hotel room to change or having to pay for an overpriced Disney outfit on site. And while you're at it, make sure you have a sack or extra bag to put your dirty clothes in too. I like bringing wet bags with me just so that they're not hanging loosely in your backpack all day, getting the rest of your stuff all wet or ice creamy. Okay, so no Disney World transportation service is perfect, though the Disney Skyliner almost is. But even these sky gondolas have their faults, especially when they have to face off against their worst enemy, weather. When there's lightning nearby or severe weather in the area, the Skyliner will close out of an abundance of caution. After all, you do not want to get stuck way up in the air in the middle of a storm. When the Skyliner is closed due to bad weather, Disney instructs guests to use buses instead. Note that depending on the time of day and your location, this sudden transportation change may add a significant amount of travel time to your journey. If you happen to be in line to use the Skyliner when it closes, cast members typically arrange for a bus to come and pick you up, though this can take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes depending on the bus schedule. So keep an eye on the weather via your AccuWeather app or whatever weather app you have so you can make a solid game plan around these pop-up storms accordingly. I've also used ride shares when things go wrong with the Skyliner and I have to get off for some reason. Ride shares can pick you up anywhere and they're pretty quick coming, so that might be an investment you wanna make. So rope dropping in Hollywood Studios might help you cut down on your time spent waiting in line for certain rides, but you know what lines get longer right after rope drop? The lines for the restrooms located off Hollywood Boulevard, aka the first area you enter when you walk through the park gate. So that's gonna be the first bathroom. Since these bathrooms are located just after the park entrance, you're gonna see a ton of people jumping in line for them before getting a move on with their day. Now these restrooms aren't exactly spacious either, so they tend to form real long lines pretty quickly. Instead of using the Hollywood Boulevard, 
Boulevard restrooms, try stopping at the bathrooms right outside the Hollywood Studios entrance instead over by the outdoor guest services area. Not only are these restrooms massive, but lots of guests tend to overlook them when making a beeline toward the park. All right, everybody, don't ask questions. Just step in the taped off box. Just do it. Okay, fine, you can ask questions. It is a weird command to mindlessly follow after all. If you're at one of the parks and you see a small box made out of tape on the ground and a few cast members standing nearby, then you've just found a clap box. Anytime a guest stands inside that tape made square, the cast members will give them a wildly enthusiastic round of applause. Whether you stand there for a long time or just briefly walk through the box while passing through, you'll still get a little applause just for being in the right place at the right time. It's really fun. They do it just as a fun thing to do for guests and it can be really what you need that day. Much like any sit-down restaurant that you'd enjoy back home, it's important to tip your servers after each and every table service meal. Now this goes for those who'll be using the Disney dining plan next year too. While the DDP will prepay for each of your meals across property, it will not cover gratuity, so you'll still need to budget for that to prevent shortchanging any of your future servers. And don't forget to leave a tip for your housekeeping cast members too. You can leave housekeeping gratuities in a marked envelope where it'll be easy to spot in the room. Just be sure to leave a tip out every day rather than waiting until the end of your trip since it won't always be the same person cleaning your room all week long. I say this as a former chambermaid. Now, Disney World is super hot a lot of the time, but I don't need to tell you that. Even for the most seasoned Florida native and Disney World pro, the summer heat can be unrelenting. This is why we recommend booking table service meals during the hottest part of the day, which is usually a little bit after the typical lunch rush, so around 1 to 3 p.m. An afternoon table service reservation allows you to get in the shade and air conditioning while also grabbing some grub. Plus, those off dining times are usually easier to snag reservations for anyways. That's a win-win. A lot of Disney World first-timers fall under the misconception that once the nighttime spectaculars shoot off their last fireworks, the park day is officially over. But don't let those massive crowds making a beeline toward the exit fool you. Some areas of the parks, like the flagship gift shops or in the case of Main Street USA and Magic Kingdom, certain quick service locations, stay open for another hour after the fireworks shows, giving folks more time to casually saunter their way out of the park without feeling like they need to immediately hightail it on out of there. And get this, sometimes even the whole park doesn't close right after the fireworks, even though it feels like it should. If a nighttime spectacular is set for an earlier time in the night, then you may still have the chance to jump on at least one or two more rides for an extra hour before the park's actual closing time. Like sometimes the park fireworks are at eight and the park doesn't close till 10, or sometimes the park fireworks are at nine and the park doesn't close till 11 or 12. And because people tend to think the parks close after the nighttime spectaculars and everyone starts to clear out, that gives you the chance to see the park with fewer people in them, so you can actually stop and take it all in. After all, something tells me your day might have been a blur of rides and shows and lots of snacks. Might as well soak up the end of the night views while you can. Okay, so Bria wants me to let you know, especially if you're one of her southern friends out there who live on super sweet tea all year round, most of the tea you're gonna find in the Disney bubble is from the Gold Peak brand, which may not be a huge deal to you, but some tea loving friends out there are not huge fans. That being said, there are a handful of Disney World restaurants that do brew their own fresh sweet tea, including Garden Grill at Epcot, 50's Primetime Cafe in Hollywood Studios, Whispering Canyon Cafe at Wilderness Lodge, Steakhouse 71 at the Contemporary Resort, and Chef Art Smith's Homecoming in Disney Springs. For a tea option on the go, you also might want to try one of Joffrey's fresh brewed peach teas or hit up Joffrey's Tea Location, Royal and Annapur Tea Company, in Animal Kingdom for a wider selection of unique tea flavors. Now these can also be found at the Joffrey's Joffrey's flagship store over in Disney Springs. All right, y'all, it's time to talk about pit stains because that is the kind of friends that we are. There's nothing to be embarrassed about if you find your pits are getting more and more sweaty by the second because believe me, you are not the only one dealing with the heat here. But that still doesn't change the fact that pit stains can take your nice looking Disney bound outfit and turn it into a mop for all your underarm sweat. Even deodorant might not be enough to keep the pit stains at bay, even after reapplying in the bathrooms. So when you're packing ahead of your trip, you may be better off packing shirt colors that don't show those sweat stains quite as much, like pale pinks or whites or navy blues or blacks instead of gray shirts, which can become a wet mess by the end of the day. Also, the looser the clothes are around your arms, the less likely you're gonna feel those stains creeping in. So you may want to avoid packing shirts with sleeves that squeeze around your biceps. 
Fabrics like cotton tees will help keep you cool as well because of their naturally breathable material. And you're gonna love this. You can achieve all of the above and still wear something super cute and Disney inspired to the parks by ordering one of our vacation designs off the dfbstore.com website. Wasn't that an amazing way for Bria to bring to your attention our very, very cool t-shirts? <laughs> Now our shirts are soft, they're 100% cotton, they are loose fitting if you want them to be, and come in several different colors, including non-pit stain showing colors. You are welcome. <laughs> Disney's refillable mugs may seem like a fantastic deal at first. For about 22 bucks, you'll receive a 16-ounce mug that'll get you rapid refills at participating quick service locations in the hotels for the remainder of your trip, up to 14 days. But if that sounds too good to be true, that's because it kind of is. While you can refill your mug throughout your entire stay at any participating Disney World hotel beverage station, even if you aren't staying there, refillable mugs do not work inside the parks or Disney Springs. So you're going to have to remember to swing by your resort's quick service first thing in the morning before heading to the parks if you want to start your day sipping on free coffee or tea or soda. And while there are refillable mugs at Disney's water parks, i.e. Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon, these are a separate purchase from the standard resort mugs and will have their own unique design and shape to help you identify one from the other. For some folks, these refillable mugs can still end up being a steal of a deal, especially if you plan on spending a lot of time just chilling around your hotel. But if you're only planning on being at your hotel to sleep and shower, having the rapid refill capabilities may not be all that beneficial for you. While most Disney World restaurants are pretty chill about what you wear in their dining room, just as long as it's family friendly, some of Disney's more upscale dining experiences, like Victoria and Albert's at Grand Floridian, Takumi Te at Epcot, and Monsieur Paul also at Epcot, do require you to wear something fancier before you dine with them. Now, this doesn't mean you gotta show up in a tux or a $10,000 cocktail dress or anything. You just gotta make sure you're wearing something a little more elegant yet relaxed. Don't overthink it. A t-shirt dress or a tennis skirt with a nice blouse works just fine. Maybe you wanna wear some khakis and a button-up or a polo. If styled correctly, you could probably even get away with a nice pair of jeans, just as long as there are no holes or frays in them. Just make sure to accessorize the denim with a more elevated top, shoes, and maybe some jewelry too. Little do y'all know, the F in DFB actually stands for fashion. No, it doesn't. There are areas in the parks that feel like you're walking around inside a giant toaster oven because there's literally zero shade to depend on. This is especially true when it comes to several of Animal Kingdom's ride queues or the entirety of Toy Story Land in Hollywood Studios, though each park area is guilty of being a little too roasty toasty at times. If you're in desperate need of shade and you don't have a dining reservation to rely upon, here are just a few of our favorite places to catch a quick bout of AC for free. First, Muppet Vision 3D. If you're catching a screening of Muppet Vision 3D in Hollywood Studios, that's a great opportunity to get out of the sun and laugh along with the zany antics of Kermit and Co. And the line's not usually too long. Now, how about Star Wars Launch Bay? This doesn't look like much and a lot of people walk right past it, but it's one of the best hidden spots to escape in Hollywood Studios for precisely that reason. It's open daily from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and inside you'll find tons of air conditioning, lots of space, and Star Wars memorabilia like costumes and models and props and more. Over in Epcot, the China Pavilion features an indoor air-conditioned exhibit all about Shanghai Disneyland. You'll find tons of props and displays and costumes out on display as well as tons of AC. Magic Kingdom's Country Bear Jamboree is about to receive a major overhaul, but if you want to catch this show before these changes take place, the theater is indoors, meaning you'll get out of the heat and be able to hear the musical stylings of Big Al and Trixie. So no dining reservations? No problem. You can always order a quick service meal and sit in a nice spacious indoor dining room like Restaurantosaurus and Animal Kingdom for a bit of a respite and recharge during your day. Okay, so let's say you take our advice and decide to wear a nice light t-shirt dress to the parks to look stylish and also stay comfy and be all ready for your Citricose reservation later. The dress itself might be cute, but what isn't cute is the sweaty burning thigh chafe that could occur after walking around all day through a hot, hot theme park. The best chafe prevention method that we've used in the past is wearing a pair of slip shorts underneath our sundresses, which could also save your hide if a sudden breeze catches the hem of your skirt, if you catch my drift. Now, investing in a chafe stick like Body Glide ahead of your trip can also provide major relief from that dreaded thigh rub. Don't be ashamed, it happens to all of us. 
So not bringing potentially dangerous items into a theme park is probably a no-brainer to you, but be careful about those self-defense items left in your pockets or bags, like pepper spray or pocket knives or other safety tools you might not have thought about removing from your keychain ahead of time. These items will trigger Disney park security systems, and no, you're not going to be banned from the parks or anything, but these items will be confiscated before you're allowed in. Other items that Disney's listed as major no-nos include, but aren't limited to, any toys that look like weapons, not including plastic lightsabers, illegal substances, fireworks, alcohol, glass containers, noisemakers, drones, oversized strollers and stroller wagons, loose ice for some reason, and folding chairs. Now, other restricted items can be found on the Disney World website via their resort property rules page, but you might be surprised with what you can't take in. You know how earlier I mentioned that it's a good idea to prepare for the worst but anticipate the best in regard to your Disney World vacation? Well, if you choose to travel during Florida's infamous hurricane season, which is from June to November, then you need to go ahead and make that your trip's mantra. Prepare for the worst, anticipate the best. Hurricane season lasts from the beginning of June to the end of November, though we usually see the bulk of hurricane activity happen around August through October. I know, that's like a good chunk of the year. But because you're traveling during hurricane season doesn't mean you're guaranteed to encounter a Floridian hurricane. What it does mean is that you need to be prepared, just in case a major storm does wind up seriously impacting your trip. If the weather is bad enough, the parks could close, which would mean you'd be stuck at the hotel with your whole group. If you know there are days during your trip that could end up rather yucky, bring plenty of things to do and make sure those laptops and phones are charged with apps and games and streaming services loaded up and ready to go, because everybody knows if we're too bored to just read a book. Just kidding. I love reading books. I hope you do too. Bring some books. Now you could also bring some board games if you got any spare room in your luggage and you also want to stock up on snacks. But even if you don't get the chance to, lots of hotel restaurants are going to offer hurricane meal kits or prepackaged meals and snacks from their dining locations. If the parks do remain open, well, brace yourself for some real bad weather still. Bring rain gear like ponchos and umbrellas and set your expectations at a reasonable level since you're more than likely not gonna be experiencing any outdoor rides or nighttime spectaculars. But you will be able to experience a lot of rides because a lot of people will bail and there won't be as long lines. For more advice on hurricane readiness during a Disney World vacation, make sure to check out our How to Survive Hurricane Season in Disney World video right after this. On January 9th, 2024, Park Pass reservations will be a thing of the past for most Disney World guests. It's glorious, meaning you'll no longer have to save your spot in a certain park after you purchase your theme park tickets. However, For the remainder of 2023 and those first few days of 2024, Park Pass reservations are still a thing, so don't forget to make them. To make Park Pass reservations, you'll do the following. Step one, link your valid theme park admission to your Disney account. The My Disney Experience app and Disney website will have prompts that lead you through that. Step two, create your party. So select any friends who are gonna be joining you on your reservation, then choose continue. Step three, select the date and park you wish to visit. And four, confirm or modify your plans. See, that's not so bad, is it? Note, if you are using a one day, one park ticket, then park pass reservations will automatically be attached to those ticket options. So you won't have to worry about making them yourselves. Park pass reservations are only required for multi-day tickets, which if you're planning on visiting at least two parks during your vacation would apply to your trip. So we want you to have a very, very jolly holiday season this year. So if you're planning on going to one of Disney's after hours parties in 2023, like Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party in Magic Kingdom or the brand new Jollywood Nights over in Disney's Hollywood Studios, make sure you book your tickets for either of those events just as soon as you know you want to go. The cheapest after hours party dates will be earlier on in the season, but these also tend to sell out fairly quickly too. In fact, the first Jollywood Nights event kicking things off on November 11th is already officially sold out. While the other dates are still available to book for both parties per the release of this video, we're expecting to see more after hours availability disappear as we get closer to the holiday season. So don't wait until the last minute to book those tickets if you know for sure that one of these is going to be a must do experience for you. For each Epcot festival, you're going to find festival specific scavenger hunts. Now these scavenger hunt boards can be purchased at various Epcot stores and festival merch kiosks. With the purchase of a board, you'll get a page of stickers that you'll use to mark your progress as you complete the hunt around World Showcase. 
and depending on the festival, that'll determine what you're on the hunt for. During Festival of the Arts, you'll be tracking down figment paintings. During Flower and Garden, you'll follow Spike the Bee from pavilion to pavilion. During Food and Wine, you'll hunt for Remy and his various cooking ingredients, and during Festival of the Holidays, you'll be helping Olaf find family traditions. Now, we do have posts online that'll give you a walkthrough of each scavenger hunt if you happen to get stuck on any particular one. Spoiler alert. But if you'd rather figure them all out for yourself, our main word of advice is to look everywhere, not just around the food booths. While some characters might be hiding out super close to the food and drinks, others will be hiding deep inside the pavilions, inside shops, out in garden areas, possibly near quick service locations too, so don't get immediately stumped if you're not finding a character right away. They just might take a little extra searching on your part. Bonus tip, you don't have to complete the scavenger hunt in order to pick up your prize. You've already paid for it, y'all. If you'd prefer, you can pick up your prize at the gift shop right when you get your game board, so you're not cheated out of your major reward if you don't wind up completing the hunt before the end of your day. Now, we're still over here mourning the loss of the toppings bar that used to be a show stealer over at Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe in Magic Kingdom. Who remembers it? R.I.P. Nowadays, the toppings bar is home to pre-packaged basics like sugar, salt, and other items, meaning no more salsa, pico de gallo, guac, or corn. That being said, you can still request extra toppings here when making your order. For example, when you place a mobile order, you can ask for things like lettuce or sour cream, salsa, and other items. Now, guac is going to cost you more now. That's the saddest part. The toppings aren't nearly as extensive as they used to be, but they might still have just the customizable options you were looking for, so be sure to keep an eye on those extras. Beaches and Cream over at Disney's Beach Club Resort has some of the best ice cream treats park-wide. If you can't find any reservations left over for this restaurant, or if you're on a tight schedule that day and don't have a whole lot of time to stop and eat a big meal in the afternoon, you'll be happy to know that Beaches and Cream has a to-go window with a limited selection of specialty shakes and floats and sundaes and seasonal stuff and single and double ice cream scoops too. They've even got boozy floats and shake options for those old enough to partake. You're gonna find this to-go window to the right side of the restaurant's main entrance, only steps away from the Storm Along Bay feature pool. While rope dropping, some of Disney World's most popular rides can be a good strategy that'll help you cut down on those potentially two, three, four hour queues. You might also want to consider becoming a night owl and hopping in the lines for Disney World's most popular rides at the end of the day. Often, if you manage to hop in line for one of these rides right before closing time, you could score some seriously low waits. But note that the big risk with this strategy is if you do wait till the end of the day to hop in line for a popular ride and that ride experiences technical issues or goes down for some reason, you may not get to experience it at all, which could be a real bummer if you're not planning on returning to that park during the remainder of your trip. So this is a risk you'll need to feel comfortable with before using this strategy. For daily data about Disney World wait times, stop by our friends website at allears.net. They report every single day on what wait times are looking like so you know just what to expect. If the last time you went to Disney World was five or ten years ago, it's not going to be the same Disney World you knew. The parks have received new areas, new rides, new restaurants, new stores, and even new ways to interact with them through services like lightning lanes and mobile ordering. Even the Skyliner is still fairly new to the Disney scene. So if it's been a hot minute since your last trip to Disney, then don't assume the same offers and prices and planning methods you used in the past are going to be around today. If you need some crash courses for each of the parks before you book, we've got a whole playlist on our DFB channel that covers the ultimate Disney World park guides for 2023. And keep your eyes peeled for an updated playlist in the next few months that'll cover everything you need to know for each of the parks for 2024. So there you have it, all the things you need to know before you go to Disney World. Well, not all the things, but at least 50 of them, and they're 50 very important ones. Like I said before, Disney World's a massive place that's constantly changing and upgrading its offerings, so make sure to keep tuning back in with us so we can keep you in the know on all the things Disney news, and be sure to download our Disney World planning worksheets if you haven't already over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash DisneyPlans. They are free, like I said before. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.